following the episode one release just a bit back we did have a pretty large update to the game earlier in the week i want to talk to you guys about it, it added several new features including something quite crazy called dynamic huds that allows you to finally disable massive amounts of the ui like the minimap uh, and a lot more almost like how we could customize our ui in guild wars one uh, then there were some other changes to the big balance patch of which i've already done a preview came in i'll talk to you guys about the effects of that and generally run through some of the stuff including the addition of capes so let's run right on in and uh, see what the devs have had to say a lot of this stuff of course is going to be affecting the new map uh, and stuff going on around it especially one of the subsequent patches which looked at one of the strike missions that so far have been a bit of a flop but we'll get back to that in just a second so running on over december Number third, uh, we have this whole section at the top here called quality of life updates. And honestly, this is some of the coolest stuff in the release. There's a lot of weird things here, like the dynamic HUDs, that I just didn't expect Guild Wars 2 to still be pursuing or be interested in. But when you see features and changes like those we're about to read, it gives me a lot of heart that the devs are still going to add all kinds of stuff to the game. Starting off with wardrobe, new checkboxes have been added to each weapon. Uh, giving players the option to hide them when it's stowed. So as you guys know, I'm not too into the fashion side of the game, the Barbie side stuff. But for a lot of people, I think this is fairly meaningful. So right now you can see I've got quite a bulky back piece on. If I was on a class that could build a shield, I'm not at the moment. Uh, but I was on the shield weapon set it would actually overwrite the backpack and the backpack would disappear Then maybe when I weapon swap to something less bulky the backpack reappears Maybe you don't like that functionality Maybe you always want to see your back or maybe you always want to see your shield or whatever So now you can while stowed hide weapons So right now as you see as I walk around I do have legendary footsteps the meteorological footsteps But you don't see it in my hand you only see my warhorn in my hand and that's because if we come over to the equipment panel here now, you'll see I have a new checkbox on the top right and I have it uh, toggled off. So this is something that only affects us while stowed. But now you can see Meteologic is on my side. It's clipping. Maybe you don't like that. So then you can turn it off. When I hit my unsew weapon bind, it does come back out and you will see it obviously for actual combat. But while sheathed, it's no longer there. You can do that for your main hand or your off hand. I think this did something weird for standard enemy models in PvP. I can't quite uh, remember exactly what the uh, extra complication is there. But overall, I think this is a fairly nice change. It would have been cooler, I think, even if the footsteps went away while I was stowed. But uh, they do actually remain at the same time. And maybe you guys think that's a nice way to get some detail from your legendary without it clunking up the way that your character looks. Next thing that might be kind of cool is something to do with ages for guardians. But hey, I think these will tend to be fairly uh, meaningless, frivolous updates as far as uh, I'm concerned. But there you go. That's one thing. Uh, let's move on. Uh, next, they say ascended feasts have been added to the guild storage in the guild consumables tab. Guilds that have unlocked the tavern can speak to the tavern proprietor to deposit their crafted food for the guild's use. So we had ascended cooking a little bit back. I was hoping they would do more with it as this season went along, but so far I don't think they have done enough really. Uh, but you can double click them out of your inventory obviously to place them on the ground. Everyone can eat from them. Well now a similar thing can be done. You can basically donate the ascended food that you've cooked to put it into your guild storage. And here you'll see now... There's this huge section for Ascended Feasts, of which we've barely begun. But you'll see that my guild has got some clove and veggie flatbread, some mint and veggie flatbread, and some salsa top veggie flatbread. Somebody's been going on the flatbread. So this will probably be something I want to do. As with the decorations, we're trying to max everything out. And I, I like the idea of having all the consumables in there. But maybe a uh, challenge for another day. This basically just means whenever you do a guild activity... You can drop whatever food you like if everybody's working towards that. This is actually not the only guild thing that came in with this update. Uh, and I'm really happy. This is exactly what I was talking about a second ago. That it feels like... Guild systems are something the devs haven't expanded on much for a long time. Let's see, max level is 69, which unlocked way back when they added the Super Adventure Box Anthem to the tavern. How long ago? Two years? Maybe more? Guild missions themselves obviously haven't been touched for a long time. It's one of the aspects of the game that I've really wanted them to look at. And at least the UI and stuff's getting things beyond just, of course, and I do acknowledge new decorations which have continually always been getting added. So anyway, this is just a nice little bonus thing, and hopefully we see more foods and stuff coming uh, into the game. Next, we have some looking for group categories being better organized for new readability. Now, I have to be honest with you guys. When I look at this, 
I don't know whether it's necessarily that much better, but things definitely do seem a bit cleaner. So we have a central terrier section, and then an equivalent heart of thorns section into season three POF. And as you scroll down, you can see some slight other changes. I ha have actually found myself using the tournament section of the PVP part of the LFG tool quite a lot lately. Uh, festivals are here even when festivals are not live. Obviously, Winter's Day isn't going on right now, but we can see the category. And uh, maybe they just added some slightly different stuff. I would say what I would really like is a global channel for each of these categories. So for example, maybe I log in for the day and I want to play Heart of Thorns, but I don't know what map, I don't care what map, I don't want to click through every single little map just to see what there are. And you'll see here as I go through, look, we got tons in Dragon Sand, we got lots going on in Tangled Depth, we've got one in here and one in here. Maybe I want to see them all together. Maybe the game feels really popular and, you know, active if there was just a global thing for Heart of Thorns that pulled from all of these others. And I think that would be really nice. Same for Path of Fire and wherever else that you might not see so much activity. Think about, say, the dungeon section. There will be dungeon LFGs going on. But what if I want to see not just the two AC ones, but I want to see all of them in the global channel at the top? Wouldn't that be cool? And then maybe a global global? Like a, an ultimate global where every LFG is listed all at once? Maybe the UI can't really handle that. Anyway, I'm happy to see some UI changes. Next we have leveling up uh, and items that grant levels and experience now display a less noisy visual effect to other players. So you might say this is quite an overdue change. Basically, the point is, as we play through the game nowadays, we get spammed with stuff like level up times, times of knowledge, or whatever else. Players will sit around at the bank and they'll spam these to get a ton of spirit shards and whatnot. Uh, and that can be quite obnoxious. It creates these big visual animations, uh, basically this, right? For years and years. And if you're doing that 80 times in a row super quick, it's, uh, you know, it's very noticeable. I'm a big believer that sound effects and things like this, this level up animation, should be really rare, right? Like, when it, when you get an exotic item and your character remarks that that's an interesting moment, I'd rather the devs be really careful about when we hear those so they actually mean something each time it comes up. Or another very good example is the sound effect that plays when you get an achievement. That should be special, but it's not when it comes up three times a day because you're simply salvaging and proccing Agent of Entropy. So based on what I just said, I was hoping that this patch had changed this animation altogether. So that this big effect really was reserved just for big moments, not random item moments. But I guess it's still there. The specific note says, for other players. So, I still see the full animation. I'm supposed to be giddy with excitement every time of knowledge I click. But other people see something less so. The effect is culled down for them. And there you have it. So, I don't actually know what that looks like. I haven't managed to get a glimpse of it just yet. We saw one over here. Literally, as I was speaking, felt like it came from that mini and it looked as big as ever. But hey, there you go. It could be that this is more white now. More, like, muted, perhaps? Or I'm just imagining things and it's the dull uh, sort of grayed out colors of the new map as the uh, tone of the story comes down a little bit. So yeah, there you go. That's the change. And um, it's something minor, I guess, in the end. Revenant inactive legend utility skills will be remembered when players transition between terrestrial and aquatic skills. Revenants have had a lot of bugs and weird stuff going on since build templates. I'm sure they're not all hit still. When Revenants copy build links, they will correctly include the inactive legend utility skills. And then we have the PvP section. So you guys may remember when build templates got added, PvP stuff was not included with it because they said, you know, it took a little bit extra and they wanted to get all the PvE stuff out and the world versus world stuff out since a huge number of players were there and those were ready already. So here's what they say. The weapon sigils, amulets, and runes are all now integrated into an equipment template, which allows you to customize your PvP equipment even when you're not in PvP. It used to be you had to be at Heart of the Mist or you had to be in a PvP game to pop the PvP version of the build panel and change that stuff. Now you can do it anywhere. The button's been added to the equipment section so that you can view it. Now I'll show you guys what that looks like. I am currently in PvE and when I press H and go to equipment, you will see all of my PvE gear. These are my uh, trinkets over on the right. This is my armor, my underwater stuff. All of this is as you would expect and it's all on tab one. This is my Berserker slash Marauder set. If I go over to say my grieving set, we change all of our gear as normal. I've got my build templates, right? My equipment templates. But you'll notice I also, under template one, have this new little button to the top right. It says standard equipment right now, but I can click to view PVP. And when I click this, you'll see all my trinkets go away, my underwater stuff goes away, all my armor goes away, which is interesting, by the way, because I think armor does still actually affect you, and you can see that this is still 
actually wearing it, but it's not relevant. And instead, I just have weapons and another set of weapons down here. We'll get to that in a second, even though I'm an Eddie. Uh, uh, we have sigils and runes and an amulet. And that's the PvP stuff. So when I click the amulet, you'll see these are all of the PvP amulets. And as with the old panel, I can still sort by category. I can see the Condi ones are here, the Vitality one, the, prote uh, the uh, Toughness one, sorry. And then the power ones. Or I can sort alphabetically as we originally were. When I click over to the runes, you can see that they list all the runes out in the game. This is all free to swap. I, I, I didn't have to build the legendary or anything like that. It's just because in Guild Wars, for PvP, you don't have to level. You don't have to do anything. You can have a level 2 character. And you will instantly have max level, max stats, uh, amulets, and all this kind of stuff. Now, one thing I am still curious about is there was a system in PvP where you had to, like, buy certain amulets for a little bit of gold. Or you had to buy certain, you know, rarer tech choice runes and things. Is that still happening in this panel or is everything kind of free now? Maybe it is still happening and you have to double click and make a quick little purchase every now and then. But that's the way that it works. Same for sigils. I think this is pretty good. It took me some time to get used to, but uh, overall I'm enjoying it. The only thing I wish the devs had done is that they had made the rune slot and the sigil slots a little bit bigger on the UI. And maybe even the amulet slot too. Just because I think that all these icons are actually really cool looking. And uh, it's a big thing to decide what rune you have. And I feel like they just look a bit too minor here. You've got all this new free space. Why not use it, right? Why not have a nice big thing saying, here's your rune. I'll also note that if you choose to spectate someone in PvP, the old panel for build stuff will still pop up when you spectate. Which is a bit of a shame, actually. Because I do think when we ping our builds, so, say the Tempest build here... This is a pretty good little preview. Maybe a little bit too big, but maybe this could have been integrated into the whole spectator thing. Especially the mouse over one. Doesn't that look great? I'd love to have some kind of screen while spectating where the mouse over version of these builds like appear for the whole team all at once. How good would that be? That was always a problem for me when I was casting. But hey, maybe that's something kind of minor that I'm a little bit obsessed with other people uh, shouldn't worry about. So yeah, this is the thing. You now have two templates in one for each of these and they'll swap as you go around so pretty nice and uh, a good little update for the build templates there pvp equipment can also be quickly accessed by clicks it uh clicking the existing pvp button while in the lobby or using the build keybind they basically just pop your equipment panel now next miss champions have been integrated into the pvp panel and now have a much larger character preview so this is um, over here now. Miss Champions before this panel here was uh, previously on the PvP build panel section, but now isn't really relevant. They've changed it. I actually kind of like it here. It does feel weird that at any moment, even in PvE, I can just wander around and bring up images of Tibble in various armor sets. Obviously, this is all associated with a redundant, unplayed, uh, boring, imbalanced game type that got dropped immediately after Heart of Thorns came out. Hopefully ArenaNet, because they still have to do stuff like this, busy work. Hopefully ArenaNet looks at Stronghold at some point to justify all the extra busy work they have to do just because it now exists. But they have it. Uh, that's what they've done. I don't know whether we'll see any new heroes or anything like that for a while. Because all functionalities moved to other menus, the old PvP build equipment panel has been retired. Except it hasn't. You still see it in spectates, as I pointed out. Now, here's this cool bit we opened the video with, but I didn't look at for very long. Dynamic HUDs. Dynamic HUDs has been added to the game. It gives players the ability to show or hide parts of the UI while in or out of combat. The UI can also be set to always hidden. A new section within general options of the options panel has been added to control the dynamic HUD. Controls of the UI have been grouped into related sections and several presets are available. So, let's run into this. First of all, a tiny bit of background. In Guild Wars 1, when I pressed 11 and popped the options menu, I had my general options, graphics, sound, control, and then another tab. In Guild Wars 1, this other tab, if I clicked there, would highlight all of my UI, and I would have the choice to toggle on or off any element I like, and to move or resize any element I like. People have wanted that for Guild Wars 2 for a while. I'm generally not on the train of just because Guild Wars 1 had it, Guild Wars 2 needs it. And I do appreciate that ArenaNet wants a certain understanding of what all their players' UI will look like, a certain amount of control. They want a certain co consistency and coherency to their game as people tune into random YouTube videos about it and so on. I understand all of that and I get why they might not want you resizing or moving everything as we did in the past. I think that's fine. So what we get now is kind of an approximation of the old Guild Wars thing. 
but with a bit less control. So here's the new section, Dynamic HUD. You'll see, first of all, we can select presets. There's a custom preset, which is where we mess with things ourselves. There's the default one where all elements of the UI will always show whether you're in or out of combat. And then you have a couple of others. You can always hide everything. That's what I showed earlier. Now, that's not really everything. Uh, there is, of course, already a keybind in the game, if I set my preset back to default, where I can toggle my UI on and off, right? Uh, you can set this in your binds. I'm currently hitting uh, my right control keybind. That's toggling everything off, and when that toggles everything off, it really means everything is off. So here, I've got my inventory up. I've got my hero panel up. I can, uh, you know, pop the PvP panel again. And when I hit right control, it will all disappear. And then it will all pop back, and it will all disappear, and it will, all menus, everything will go away with that bind. The new stuff down here... When it says on the preset, always hide all, it will still give you menus. So it's a little bit like immersive combat mode mod from uh, yesteryear, which you guys may remember I made several videos about, uh, where you can actually still get access to various parts of the game. Uh, and obviously when we go back onto options here, you can see that they come back. And then we have the next ones, which are much more interesting. Uh, I'll start off by showing you Explorer. So this says it's a balanced selection of elements that show or hide UI based on being in or out of combat. When we click it, you'll see my minimap goes away, which is extremely immersive, a cool explorer way to play the game. You might think, oh, no minimap, it's really hard to navigate. But remember, you can always pop your big map. It just means while you're looking at Tyria, you're like fully immersed in the environment around you. You're not flashing over to the minimap all the time. You're actually getting a sense of the environment you're at and you're actually stopping to properly look, okay? Uh, but we also lose our skill bar. All I really have on screen right now is my chat panel. And then obviously, if we, I wanna talk to my guild or whatever, I can pop other panels as I need them, but the game will be pretty empty, especially if I toggle the chat panel off. You might think, wow, this is completely unplayable. How, how can you do anything? But as long as you're not doing anything too intensive, and as long as if you want to make tweaks to your build, you do it through this main menu, which is totally possible. It is playable, because when you come over to this dirt deer and I attack him, the minimap comes back, the uh, health bar comes back, my endurance bar comes back, everything's there for as long as I'm in combat. I can attack this rabbit. And here, even though I'm in combat for um, just a brief window, it will pop my stuff up. I can see what's going on, and I can leave. So if you have a bit of muscle memory for skills that give you swiftness, say here, I've just used my uh, Warhorn skill, uh, you can play. You, I can, obviously can't see the cooldown of my Warhorn skill right now for when I can go swiftness again. But if I spam the button again, it will tell me the skill's recharging, so I can see that. And basically, it's just uh, you can have super minimal uh, UI, and still be able to effectively play the game because as soon as you actually need it that's when it pops on now a lot of this is going to be context based a lot of this is going to be down to your taste i personally really love the idea of this feature but i haven't played with it enough to figure out how much i really enjoy it right now i think a thing's going on where because i've spent so many years playing guild wars 2 and having an idea of what information is available to me that now the idea of toggling it off, I feel somewhat naked and somewhat alone and somewhat, you know, offset a little bit. And for that, obviously, I could make my own preset. Maybe I think it's all fine, but these buttons up here on the top left, maybe I really don't care about these. Maybe I don't need these ever. So I can set up a custom preset that just messes with those, but all the other information I still have on screen. That's the new feature. I do recommend you guys get in game and figure out exactly how you like it. I've been quite inspired to do a new playthrough lately and maybe doing something on Explorer mode or on Immersion immersive mode would be right up my alley. Don't forget that when they did that extra life thing, they did that cool cat tonic that allows you to play the game like in a full on uh, cat form that refines your camera down and gives you new skills and stuff. I kind of like the idea of trying to beat the game with some dynamic HUD stuff going on and maybe that tonic, but I guess we'll see. That's the new feature and I was really surprised. Completely out of the blue. I like unexpected like stuff like this. It makes me feel like any number of weird and cool things could keep getting added to the game as the devs continue to support it. Uh, moving on, we've got a very cool change. Probably uh, caused much of the buzz about this patch. It will probably be in the title of my video. Here it is, capes have been added to the game as a new type of back item skin. The first cape, the basic guild cape, is available from guild commendation traders. 
Capes are indeed here. So I'm going to actually character swap now over to another one of my tunes so that you guys can see what I've got set up. A bit of background. Capes were a staple feature of Guild Wars 1. Guild Wars 1, you would get a guild and that would give you a cape. It would have the guild's emblem on it. People have wanted it in Guild Wars 2 for a very long time. The devs have always struggled with it, though, because of clipping. Because of the nature of having five playable races with different kinds of uh, bodies and armors. Any kind of cape that clips with stuff, people wouldn't really like. They also didn't have that great cloth physics. But last year, around when the Rotor Beetle races got added, we obviously saw stuff like the racing scarf get, get added. And people were wondering, does this mean that capes will be coming too? Since now they have this kind of new cloth stuff. I believe that one of the outfits in the game, the wedding dress outfit also had this kind of uh, I mean not on a male norn I guess but uh, on some of the uh, the race gender con combos I'm pretty sure the wedding outfit had some nice cloth stuff well now they've done it th they've finally gone ahead they've added the capes so yeah the basic cape and that is what you are looking at in the this video right now the white cape on my back is the guild commendation one it wasn't just Ascended Feast coming to the UI that Guild's got this update. There's actually a new thing for commendations. I, for the first time in a while, did Guild missions. It's really cool to see the devs actually add something as a reward on one of those vendors. And I can't think of anything more appropriate. There's already a bunch of back uh, packs and things for Guilds. And well, now we've actually got a cape on there. What's interesting about this... Any player can get it. It's not at the gem store or anything like that. Uh, is it's customizable because of your guild emblem being reflected on it. So if we actually come up here, you'll see maybe I'm a warrior player and I want everyone to know it. So I can take the warrior icon and now I've got the warrior icon on my back, right? I can recolor it. Or maybe I'm a ranger player and maybe I'd want to make this green. There's obviously icons for each of the professions. You can figure out exactly how you like to do that. Or you can do any number of other crazy things. There's a funny beaver that you can put on there. There's a love heart you can put on there. The selection of symbols and icons gets updated sometimes as well. I think when the expansions came out, the devs ran community contests to design their own. And uh, I guess that means there's some players out there now who have uh, designed some things and basically they can put it on their own gear. Don't forget there's a lot of guild stuff that does this. You can actually wear full guild armor. There are guild weapons and stuff that all will have whatever icon you like. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of a fun part of the guild capes, but it's not the best. See, the feature here to me is not really that capes have been added to Guild Wars 2. There was already a lot of gear that kind of felt cape-like. And in fact, I've come onto this character for a very specific reason. I'm going to hide my cape now. I kind of feel like this armor that I'm in right now felt pretty capey already, right? Well, the real thing that is cool about this is the dye channels. As you guys know, you can dye armor, not weapons. That was a Guild Wars 1 feature since removed. And you can dye your glider. But you've never been able to dye your backpack. There are so many backpacks in the game but you can't ever tweak their colors. You know, since this thing here is red, it will always be red. And when it comes to some of the glider backpack combos, such as, and there, I mean, there's a, a ton of them, such as these, the light blade, right? It's been weird because if I use this as my backpack, these are stuck as yellow. But if I use them as my glider, I could dye them red or I can dye them black or I can dye them green and then they would be mismatched. Well, that was always kind of strange. I think the devs have realized that dyeable backpacks would be great for the game. And that's what's profound about capes. Capes are dyeable. Check it out. If I go to dyes, you now see a whole new section at the very bottom for the basic guild cape, which I'll toggle on here. And you can see I can not only have a customizable icon on it of three different dye channel colors on it. I get additional dye channels on the cape itself. So for the guild commendation one, you can dye the general body and then you can dye the rim. So, you know, you can do like a black body. Oh my God, that's crazy. And I guess the dye channels come out uh, really cleanly here. Let me get Shadow Abyss or something, right? So we'll just go as black as possible. And then uh, we could do some kind of gold on the trim. And there you go. You've got like your gold trimmed black cape. And well, you guys can decide if I made something that actually looks cool there. You can spend a long time tweaking this and it's pretty nice. In addition, of course, with the gem store, there was another update. There's a second cape. This one, you won't get your own customizable logo on, but it's longer, as you can see here. It's got its own embellishments and whatnot, and it has more dye channels. So if you do go for the gem store, this cost me about 200 gold, I think it was. 
through the conversion and uh, you can dye this in any number of ways that you see fit. Uh, just to give you a little example. Uh, I tend to not be very good at this kind of stuff, but there's a few dyes that really let you see there's quite a lot of texture on the cape. It looks very clothy and whatnot. And there you go. That's kind of how the physics work. I think there were some bugs with certain bone structures and certain models and things for players, but it has been nice and I actually do quite enjoy wandering around Tyr at the moment, looking at other players, seeing their capes and uh, it feels pretty good. I, I kind of felt like this was going to be a lot of hubbub about Nothing really in a way sort of like a patch that didn't need to happen But the devs did just because the players have been whining about it for so many years But I actually do really like it now that it's in and uh, it's certainly been a fun one to toy around with uh, I would definitely recommend people go for the commendation one if they can create a new mini guild for themselves and customize their emblem in any way that they see fit That's probably the more fun way of doing it And I think probably better than the gem store one. It's just the capes a bit short. Maybe the devs can add another commendation based uh, um cape that's bigger that would be pretty cool next we've got a section about the bureau marches you guys can pause the video and read this if you like but i'm going to be skipping over it uh, mostly because i personally haven't played episode one that much just yet so i don't have much context for how important or how meaningful these things are once i get into the patch and i start learning about it i'll be sure to talk to you guys about it obviously but so far since i've been so late to the game with that episode i basically did a rudimentary story playthrough and not anymore well, there'll be another one coming very soon I don't know. So there you have it. Let's move on uh, for the item section. This one's pretty funny. The feisty feline tonic. This is the cat tonic I talked about that gives you cat skills and changes your camera and whatnot. Came with extra life. Well, it had a leap ability on it, which was coded very weirdly and essentially would allow you, any player, since it was a, you know, an account bound tonic, anyone could drink, to do some ridiculous jumps and climb things that they should not have been allowed to. Uh, this is only something I heard about after this patch came in fixing it. I struggle to uh, imagine what it is this was letting you do that a, skim a springer couldn't. But I think the point is, if you found an area that mounts were disabled, but the feline tonic wasn't, well, now you're laughing and you could do some pretty funny climbs. So there you have it. They fixed a bug with the Rune of the Revenant where it wasn't working. And then an issue where the minis from Icebreed Saga weren't being sorted correctly in the mini section of the equipment tab. This is actually funny to me and important to me. I've been on a quest to get so many minis lately. I'm trying to get them all in the game. That the ordering of how everything's bundled together is something I've started taking note of. And these guys shifted around. Next we have Profession. Now, I've actually already read all of this to you guys in a two hour long video with Boots where we went through the changes, what we thought that they meant for the game. They've obviously been out in there now for about a week and I can give you guys some updates. First of all, I'll point out there's no real flashy animations for me to show you in this video here, but some of the striking changes, first of all, a lot of elementalists have actually been running Glyph of Renewal competitively, which has been fun to see. This minor trait for Grenadier, which you guys might remember is now firing the Lesser Grenade Barrage, actually hasn't been that fun for me, but I think Boots has made a ridiculous build you might be able to check out over on his channel soon uh, in World vs. World using it. The changes to the Signet of Undeath were indeed sacrifices. There's a true sacrifice skill now where you half your health to cast it. It's just like Flesh of My Flesh from Guild Wars 1, except you can move while casting casting it and obviously there's all the other stuff going on at the same time and that's been very cool to see the radius increase on Ventari stuff has been nice but I feel like it's more the issue of summoning it to new areas that's making it difficult to use and then finally we have all of the PvP changes which pretty much went about as we predicted there's a couple of other little updates here one of them was with the gem store which by the way now glows blue on the UI, when I go in game here on the top left, you'll see that there's actually going to be a blue outline around it, around it sometimes, telling you that there's new items you can check out. I guess the devs trying to make more people look at it and increase their turnover somehow. They described that capes have been added and a couple of new stuff that's been uh, returned. So that was the patch pretty much, guys. I'll also note that a later patch in the week up here did some meaningful changes to the Bone Skinner up, uh, encounter. Basically, the three strike missions from the new episode were all really lackluster. I've done them all. And I just kind of stood there spamming skills through them, ignoring all of their mechanics. But now that the devs have updated the Bone Skinner, I think it's actually a much more meaningful encounter and much closer to some of the raid engagements in the game, which is nice. So at least one of the three actually means something now. So there you go, guys. That was the patch. Uh, quite a few meaningful little things in there, actually. It's nice to see a patch with some deeper substance to it following the release of episode one. And I hope the Icebrood Saga keeps doing that. Let me know what you think about the capes. Obviously, Ellie and Engineer Weapon Swap in that balance 
section as well if that's actually been benefiting you guys you can do a trick on those classes where you add a stacking sigil on your new unused weapon set and get extra stats you never had before that's kind of cool and uh, anything else I've mentioned today what you've been using the dynamic hard for please give me your advice on this I'd love to hear it and uh, and until next time guys the next video you see will probably be a full proper playthrough of episode one so keep your eye out for that and until then uh, take care guys have a wonderful evening and I'll see you very shortly.